All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're going to be going over one of Synology's more business-focused services, and that is snapshot replication with replication specifically. And so snapshots I've covered in a couple of different videos. It's that BTRFS feature that allows you to super easily take snapshots of your entire file system and be able to restore them at any time, which is great in case you mess up a file or somebody encrypts your entire file system, you can undo it all and just go back in time and have so many different copies of your data. But remember, that is not a backup. Now, snapshot replication is an extension of this. Snapshot replication allows you to take all the snapshots from one main NAS and send them over to a secondary backup NAS. This means in the event that the first NAS fails, you can actually have your entire data set exactly how it was become failed over and just inline replaced. So this means that if anything happens to your main NAS, you can have downtime on the level of minutes before your entire shared folders are back online. All you have to do is switch over the old NAS to the new NAS, do a failover, and then just change the DNS record to point from the old NAS that has just failed to this backup NAS. And this is an incredibly important feature for business and enterprise users who, if they have even 10 minutes of downtime, can be incredibly expensive for them because they're, all their workers will not be productive and a ton of stuff will just shut down to a halt. And so that's why snapshot replication is a huge feature for them, but it can also be a useful feature for home users. Snapshot replication allows you to send backups essentially offsite, and they're using BTRFS snapshots. Now this differs from hyper backup and I'm gonna go over that in a little bit, but what this can allow home users to do is set up a secondary offsite backup, maybe at a friend or family member's house. Then be able to have a read only copy of all of your data on that house. So say you wanna make sure that your family has access to all the photos directly on a local NAS in their house. It will double as not only a backup, but also as a read only copy for all the snapshots. So you can back up your photo drive to their house and they'll be able to have a read only copy of it. So as long as they just want to look at the photos or anything like that, they'll have access to all the data and then you are protected in case your main NAS fails. It is not a true backup application that is hyper backup. Backups are all about having multiple copies of the data and being able to restore everything. Backups are mostly focused on having access to all the files, but not necessarily ultra low downtime. Replication is focused on having high uptime, but not necessarily tons and tons of copies of the data. And so those are how these two applications change. For most home users, I would recommend hyper backup still because it is set up for that more. But if you have a need to have your entire NAS back up and running within in a matter of hours, what you can do is set up snapshot replication and an offsite backup. Then if your NAS fails, go drive, pick up that NAS unit, drive it back to your office and restart the entire thing there. And you will be able to get everything back up and running almost instantaneously compared to having to buy a new NAS and use hyper backup to restore your entire file system that way. And so this is what it's really focused on. All right, and so now to set this up, it's actually incredibly easy. Just go ahead and on both NASes that you've got, go to Package Center and download Snapshot Replication. As you can see, I've already got it here. And just go ahead and install it on both units. Then on your main unit, go ahead and open it up. And now we're going to go into the replication section. So as you can see, I've already gone ahead and set this up, but we're gonna go ahead and set up a new one with a create. And we're gonna select remote. You can also use snapshot replication to have essentially two different volumes be in sync. So you have a main volume and a secondary volume. So that would be the case where the entire volume crashes and gets entirely destroyed. Then you could still have your NAS running and just switch over everything to that secondary volume and then have everything up and running there. So that is another option. Though, if you are looking for the highest reliability, I would recommend remote because if the NAS unit fails itself, you're still going to be out of luck. And so instead, I would highly recommend remote, but the local option is there for those who need it. And then for server name, IP address, you've got two options here. You can use Quick Connect or you can do this locally. So I'm doing this locally. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the drop down menu and it's just automatically gonna find this. 
If you are going to be putting this offsite, I would really recommend setting up an open VPN server as it will be the most secure version of this. And so to do that, it's incredibly easy. All you have to do is set up a VPN server on this local NAS and then have your secondary NAS automatically connect back to it with that open VPN configuration. And I'll go ahead and leave a link to how to set up an open VPN server on the Synology NAS in the description below. But since I'm local, it's already found it for testbed. And now just sign in with a username and password. And then if you are going to be doing this remote, I would recommend having an encrypted connection. But since we're local, I'm not gonna do encryption, it'll just be faster. And now you say where you want it to go. So this is the destination volume. So volume one on my remote NAS. Just click next. And we're gonna select it, and I've got this tutorial one right here. And so it'll give you a estimated time. And what's really cool about this too is you can actually go ahead and dump all the data on a hard drive, drive it over, and then plug it into that NAS. And so you can set it up initially with a hard copy of the data because the initial sync is always what's gonna take the longest. And so that's a way to really speed this up. But we're just gonna go ahead and since we're all local, do this here. Another thing you can do is have them both in the same building, both on the same network for that first replication. And then once that's done, change it over to a remote backup. And then once that's done, go ahead and drop it off at whatever remote site you're going to and then reconnect it. And that way the first backup's really fast because it's local and then subsequent ones are not gonna have as large of file changes. So we're just gonna go ahead and click next. And now you can have the replication schedule. You can have it daily and you can even have it every five minutes. And so for businesses who need these side by side, always essentially syncing each other, this is going to be a great option. Then you can also have a timeout timer. So this is how long before you get an email that the snapshot failed because it just took too long. We're gonna set that to 50 minutes because of the rough size of this folder and I don't wanna get a ton of emails. What you can do is first time set this to like 900, 9,000 minutes or something like that. And then once the first backup is done, then go ahead and set this to a more realistic value. You can also say, okay, I only want to send it at night or only during business hours or anything like that. And so you've got a ton of options here. And then you've got your advanced retention rules. You've got this incredibly easy menu of say, hey, I want a snapshot of the hour for every single hour. I want a snapshot of the day for the past seven days. We can even put that at 14 days. And we'll have a snapshot of the week for the past six weeks and a snapshot of the month for the past three months and zero yearly snapshots. You can really set this to whatever you like and you can change this later. And you just say when to delete snapshots. And what you can also do is you can actually use the snapshots that are already local to replicate them, but it will take a little bit longer. So I would not recommend ticking either one of these. So we're just gonna go ahead and click next and we're just gonna go ahead and kick it off. All right, and so now it's going. I have noticed this weird thing as soon as it starts, it goes to 40% and then doesn't really change there. So this is not super useful, but we can go into info and we can actually see the setup. We can see that, okay, the source is tank, which I'm on right now. And then the destination is test bed. You can see what's being transferred and everything. You can look at statistics on all your runs and see additional topology. So this can allow you to do more complex things such as having this backup to here and then another backup or you can back up to two different places. So you have two different failover options if you need that. Maybe one on site and maybe one off site. Or you can even have two different units backing up each other. So you can have a main office and a secondary office, both being snapshot destinations for either one. And so if one failed, you can always open up to the other one. And that's the really important part of this is failover. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and go over to the backup one, which is testbed. And so this is the one that's having data replicated to it. So we're gonna go ahead and open up snapshot replication. And we can go ahead and go into replication and we'll see that data is being sent over. And it seems like this one actually has a bit more information but still 46% is not right. So if we look at info, eh, maybe it is a little bit right. We're about halfway through it. So it'll probably take another minute and a half. All right, and so just like that, we can see that it has successfully copied the data over. And so now let's actually see what's happened here. So let's go into a file station. And we're actually gonna see that the folder is there and all the data is in there. But the thing is, if we tried to add a folder to it, let's just add a folder, we'll call it test. 
we'll see that it has an error. That's because all these folders are stored as read-only snapshots. That way, you make sure that you don't accidentally put data in here that is going to be overwritten. And so in the state where it is a destination, it does not allow you to write any data to it. But now, let's say we want to test and make sure that we'll be able to successfully fail over. So we're just gonna go back into replication, and this time we're gonna go into recovery. We're gonna select it, and we're gonna hit action, and we have a few different options here. Switch over flips it. So instead of this being the replication destination, this will be the main and the previous main will be the replication destination. So that flips them if you need to do something like that. Or there's failover and failover only gets shown when the main unit is no longer communicatable or if you need to force failover, that's another option where it forces it even though you can still talk to the unit then we can also go ahead and click test failover. And this allows you to make sure that, hey, this is going to work. And that's really important. And so what you do is you hit test failover and then you select, okay, what do I wanna call it? We'll call it tutorial test. And what it's gonna do is let you select which snapshot you'd like to use. And then also it will create a new shared folder for that. So we're gonna go ahead and click test failover. And so now that it's complete, we'll go back into file station and we'll see this tutorial test. But now let's go ahead and create a new folder in there. Boom, it's writable. And so now, almost instantaneously, we have access to all the data again. And what we could do is do a true failover and actually have everything start pointing to this destination. And so that just decreases your downtime significantly because your entire file system, in the exact way that it was, is automatically available for you in five minute increments, which is awesome. And so this is a great way of making sure that when something does happen, you'll be able to actually use it. And so what you'll be able to do is point everything to this test folder right here, and then make sure that services get back up and running immediately. And so that way you know your backups work. And so now into snapshot replication again, we can say, okay, we did the testing, we know it works. So we'll go back into recovery, select it, and for action, clean up test failover. And don't select any if you don't want these saved. So we'll go ahead and just clean up. And so that's all there is to it. Now let's also try switching it. So let's click switch over. And so now it's gonna flip the destination to the source and the source to the destination. In case you really needed one unit to be down, but you still wanted to be active, you could do that and just click switch over. And so now it's successfully switched over. And so now let's see what happens when we go ahead and add a folder to this. We'll go back into file station, open it back up again. So now tutorial, which used to be unwritable, we'll go ahead and create a folder. Now it's there. So now let's go ahead and kick off another snapshot real quick. And so you can see right here, it says replicated to tank instead of from. We're gonna go ahead and click sync to just force a snapshot to be sent. And so that way we don't have to wait for the five minutes to happen and it to be sent over. And so now let's go into tank, which was originally the main source of our data. And we can see that the data is being sent in. And now if we go into file station, we can see that test folder was successfully sent over. And so now we've been able to switch the master and the backup. And that means that we did not have any downtime essentially. It is incredibly quick and allows you to do a lot of cool things like this. And so if one needs to be down for maintenance, you can take it down and have everything using the main one. And then once it's back up, resync everything and send it back to the same version. And that way you really decrease your downtime. And it's an awesome setup for this. And so this has awesome applications, like say you need to update DSM, or say you have a disk that failed and you wanna make sure you still have ultra high performance. Well, you can flip your destination and your source while your disk is being rebuilt on the original source. And so that means you're not gonna have the slower speed because the disk is being rebuilt on the server that's actually hosting all the data. Then once that disk is done rebuilding, switch them back and the backup becomes the backup again. There's a lot of really cool applications for this, especially once you get into the enterprise world and Synology has just done this incredibly well. I'm very impressed. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. If you wanna sponsor the channel, there's a link for that and you get early access to all my videos and it really helps me out. Also subscribe if you haven't already and have a good one, bye.